Hello and good morning and welcome to Depth Camera Central Volume 31. Today we're going to briefly review the KinFu application, which is based on the Connect Fusion implementation. Uh, this has been around for many years. I think the original patents were submitted around 2011, the research paper. Uh, and and the, there's four different patents from 2012 uh, that cover real-time camera tracking using depth maps, mobile camera localization using depth maps, three-dimensional environment reconstruction, and moving object segmentation using depth images. Uh, now for the uh, Azure Connect camera, which is what you see here on the right-hand side, it's the same thing that's being used in the HoloLens 2 on the front, one megapixel camera via vertical cavity surface emitting laser for a time of flight sensor. And what this is doing is implementing a 3D reconstruction algorithm uh, and it's taking a sequence of depth images, it's taken from the depth sensor or any depth camera. Again, this doesn't have to be run on a Connect, uh, Azure Connect camera. It can also be run on the RealSense camera, and I will put a link to that right above here. But what it's doing is taking those depth images sources, any kind of stereo camera matching algorithms or even ray marching renderers, and then the output is going to be uh, obtained as a vector of points, a voxel uh, system, and then those, those normals will be rendered from a given camera pose, and then an internal representation of that model, again, as a, a voxel cuboid, um, is going to keep that trunc uh, truncated sign distance function, TSDF, all those values, which are, are, are an assortment of distances to the surface. Um, and then essentially from there, what it's going to do is use OpenCL acceleration automatically and to implement this, this connect fusion algorithm, uh, which essentially what it's doing is a, a collection of depth processing algorithms. So what I'll have is, an open CV, uh, a LinMod 3D object recognition, the fast surface normals and 3D plane finding. So that's what you're seeing here. As I'm moving my hands, what you're gonna see, it, it, the, the, the 3D representation here is actually going to reinitialize every time I move, which is really, really cool. And then you can output this directly to a PLY file, uh, like a point cloud file, and you can also enable a viz renderer. I'll show that at the end of this. It's really cool to look at all the different pixels and, and voxel cuboid in real time. And, and these things are helpful to understand how the system is mapping volumetric spaces. Again, because if you study the Azure Connect camera system, uh, you can also understand how the HoloLens 2 spatial computing device is also understanding its environment here as you, as you scan uh, all the way around using you know simultaneous localization and mapping and again TSDF type functions. If you want to understand how that TSDF works, it's in the main uh, .cpp file. Many of the functions you can you know review in detail. It's a comprehensive uh, educational resource, and this is how I teach myself all of these different applications. Is always going through the code, right? Because if, if you didn't have all this open source information, you'd have to build many of these applications from scratch. And that's not what we want to do. Now, let's come back to the, the KinFu application. Now, if you follow the, uh, the resources and, and the steps provided by Microsoft online, there's about 25 gigabytes or more of dependencies that need to be installed and configured uh, for this system, VTK, OpenCV, uh, Open3D, many, many other things. So there is a, um, there's a GitHub library that I'll put a link to here that actually already has everything integrated and all you have to do is build it out in Visual Studio 2019 with Build Tools 142 and there's an SLN already built there and once you have all the dependencies installed, OpenCV and various other things, you should be able to very quickly iterate and deploy this you know, within five to 10 minutes as long as you have everything configured and set up correctly, okay? So again, if you're looking at the, the application, what this is mainly used for, and I, I like to think of proof of concepts, is if you wanted to take one uh, Azure Connect sensor and maybe you know configure it with a Jetson Xavier NX developer kit on a small box, you could create a proof of concept that is like a handheld 3D scanner. You could have multiple systems, one on the front, one on the back, where you could do 300 60 degree type volumetric capture. Um, and that's really amazing. And trying to think outside of the box, there's a lot of use cases and implementations for this you know, particular device in the medical fields, right? So you have patients lying down in beds. You want to understand how they're moving post-surgery, post-op, uh, you know, and rehabilitative services. Uh, I have many videos coming up for uh, vision-based and cognitive-based services within the Azure cloud. I will show you exactly how to configure these systems and some of the uh, you know proof of concepts and open opportunities for anyone to develop these kinds of sensors right so it, now because of the Azure cloud 
you have a lot of implementations and, and available options that were not there previously where you needed some kind of an inference model running on machine. You know, this is running on, on a GPU uh, based system. So the, the amount of Azure Connect sensors you can have on one machine is not only limited by the USB bandwidth, it's also limited by the VRAM on the GPU. And I'll, 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 again, those will be coming up in, in, in new volumes for the, these educational uh, spatial computing depth camera series where I'm trying to sync multiple depth cameras together. I've had up to eight Azure Connect cameras on one uh, local PC, but it's much easier to split everything across a remote server where you have two, at least two computers with four uh, individual Azure Connects all synced together, uh, again, because of those pulses, right? We reviewed that previously, I believe, in Depth Camera Central Volume 24. But I hope this makes a little bit more sense for you guys so you can see the visualization of the KinFu system. And, and then on the back end of this, I'll show you the, uh, the Viz Render Cloud that you can just open. And what that's going to do is, is give you a 3D representation of this scan from the Azure Connect system, uh, which is really helpful because you understand that the, 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 the total space and volume that it's scanning, but also uh, you know the frame rates. It does slow it down quite a bit, which is why I didn't show it in this video. It's a little difficult to get it to come up and render uh, without shutting down my, my recording system here. But again, you can also, if you look at the top there, you can press R to reset KinView once you have this up and running on your system. And what that'll do is you see once I stop moving, that just keeps scanning here for that 3D uh, representation. And once I press R, it rescans back out. Um, and, and again, if you want to enable the Viz render, you press V. And then if you want to write out to a PL, uh, PLY file via that KF underscore output dot PLY, point cloud file uh, in the running folder of the subdirectory, you just press W. Um, and then there's a few things you'd have to do in regards to uh, the contribution kits because this is, you know, this system does have patents. So you need to understand when you're using it, um, you, you have to give, uh, you know, the VTK DLLs in the running folder. And you, you also have to understand there's some legal consents there to the use the connect function in, in an application. So you, you have to make sure to reference this and, and and, and, and get the appropriate approvals before you implement it in an application. But just think about all the different types of 3D scanning systems we have now. And in the future, I want to compare this system versus the new uh, Apple, you know, light imaging detection and ranging system. I think there's a lot of questions in regards to the comparative analysis versus point clouds generated, you know, with these time of flight uh, V-cell systems versus the LiDAR systems. Uh, even versus stereoscopic visual based odometry systems like the Z2. Many questions out there for robotic, robotic engineers, um, you know, and, and computer vision enthusiasts and, and you know, uh, PhD students who are trying to understand which system is, is the best to implement within their uh, implementation uh, and which is the easiest to do. Now, I have some new sensors that I'll be recording videos on in the next two days, which have everything integrated, like an AI inference model. Uh, you know, running running directly on device instead of just having an Intel RealSense and a, and a Jetson Nano. This these new platforms that are running on the Movidius Myriad X are revolutionary because again, what it's doing is taking things from the edge and bringing it to device, which in, increases and enhances the efficiency. You know, reduces uh, the, the the load and the computational frame rates on the CPU, and I'll be showing that to you real time. But thank you so much for tuning in to Volume 31 this morning. And on the back end of this, I will show you the, the Enable Viz Render Cloud so you understand what that looks like. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Here's a quick snippet of that Viz Render Cloud. Now, the default is off. And again, when you enable it, you will see a significant uh, you know, parsing of the computational load on the system because it has to render all of these voxel cuboids in this, uh, this 3D a representation of that volumetric capture. But again, this is the output, uh, you know, like a pre-rendered output of the PLY file. So you can see this in real time, so you understand what it looks like. Thank you so much.